A runaway greenhouse effect is a state in which a net positive feedback between surface temperature and atmospheric opacity increases the strength of the greenhouse effect on a planet until its oceans boil away. An example of this is believed to have happened in the early history of Venus. On the Earth, the IPCC states that a runaway greenhouse effect analogous to that of Venus appears to have virtually no chance of being induced by anthropogenic activities." Other large-scale climate changes are sometimes loosely called a «runaway greenhouse effect», although it is not an appropriate description. For example, it has been hypothesized that large releases of greenhouse gases may have occurred concurrently with the Permian-Triassic extinction event or Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum. Other terms, such as, "...abrupt climate change." Or tipping points could be used when describing such scenarios, as well as the term hothouse state. A hypothetical runaway greenhouse effect on the Earth should not be confused with a greenhouse Earth, which has happened in several well known periods. During 80% of the latest 500 million years, the Earth is believed to have been in a greenhouse state due to the greenhouse effect. When there were no continental glaciers on the planet, the levels of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, such as water vapor and methane, were high, and sea surface temperatures (SSTs) ranged from 28 degrees Celsius (82.4 degrees Fahrenheit) in the tropics to 0 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit in the polar regions. Topic: History. This term was coined by Caltech scientist Andrew Ingersoll in a paper that described a model of the atmosphere of Venus. Water vapor initially in the atmosphere of Venus absorbed outgoing radiation, which caused the planet to heat and increase water evaporation, leading to a positive feedback loop. High abundance of water vapor in the atmosphere allowed photodissociation to occur, with lighter hydrogen gas escaping to space and oxygen reacting with surface rocks. This model is supported by the deuterium hydrogen ratio on Venus, which is 150 times greater than the d h ratio on Earth. Feedbacks Positive feedbacks do not have to lead to a runaway effect, as the gain is not always sufficient. A strong negative feedback always exists radiation from a planet increases in proportion to the fourth power of temperature, in accordance with the Stefan Boltzmann law so the positive feedback effect has to be very strong to cause a runaway effect see gain. An increase in temperature from greenhouse gases leading to increased water vapor which is itself a greenhouse gas causing further warming is a positive feedback, but not a runaway effect, on Earth. Positive feedback effects are common e ice albedo feedback, but runaway effects do not necessarily emerge from their presence. Topic. Venus A runaway greenhouse effect involving carbon dioxide and water vapor may have occurred on Venus. In this scenario, early Venus may have had a global ocean. As the brightness of the early Sun increased, the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere increased, increasing the temperature and consequently increasing the evaporation of the ocean, leading eventually to the situation in which the oceans boiled, and all of the water vapor entered the atmosphere. On Venus today there is little water vapor in the atmosphere. If water vapor did contribute to the warmth of Venus at one time, this water is thought to have escaped to space. 
Some evidence for this scenario comes from the extremely high deuterium to hydrogen ratio in Venus's atmosphere, roughly 150 times that of Earth, since light hydrogen would escape from the atmosphere more readily than its heavier isotope, deuterium. Venus is sufficiently strongly heated by the Sun that water vapor can rise much higher in the atmosphere and be split into hydrogen and oxygen by ultraviolet light. The hydrogen can then escape from the atmosphere and the oxygen recombines. Carbon dioxide, the dominant greenhouse gas in the current Venusian atmosphere, owes its larger concentration to the weakness of carbon recycling as compared to Earth, where the carbon dioxide emitted from volcanoes is efficiently subducted into the Earth by plate tectonics on geologic time scales. Earth. Earth's climate has swung repeatedly between warm periods and ice ages during its history. In the current climate the gain of the positive feedback effect from increased atmospheric water vapor, as well as Earth being too far away from the Sun at its current luminosity for such to occur is well below that which is required to boil away the oceans. Climate scientist John Houghton has written that there is no possibility of Venus's runaway greenhouse conditions occurring on the Earth." However, climatologist James Hansen disagrees. In his Storms of My Grandchildren he says that burning coal and mining oil sands will result in runaway greenhouse on Earth. A re-evaluation in 2013 of the effect of water vapor in the climate models showed that James Hansen's outcome might be possible, but requires ten times the amount of CO2 we could release from burning all the oil, coal, and natural gas in Earth's crust. Further, Benton and Twitchett have a different definition of a runaway greenhouse. Events meeting this definition have been suggested as a cause for the Paleocene Eocene thermal maximum and the Great Dying. <laughs> <laughs> Distant future Most scientists believe that a runaway greenhouse effect is actually inevitable in the long term as the Sun gradually gets bigger and hotter as it ages. Such will potentially spell the end of all life on Earth. As the Sun becomes 10% brighter in about 1 billion years' time, the surface temperature of Earth will reach 47 degrees Celsius 117 degrees Fahrenheit, causing the temperature of Earth to rise rapidly and its oceans to boil away until it becomes a greenhouse planet similar to Venus today. According to astrobiologists Peter Ward and Donald Brownlee in their book The Life and Death of Planet Earth, the current loss rate is approximately 1 mm of ocean per million years, but this rate is gradually accelerating as the Sun gets warmer, to perhaps as fast as 1 mm every 1,000 years. Ward and Brownlee predict that there will be two variations of this future warming feedback, the moist greenhouse", where water vapor dominates the troposphere while water vapor starts to accumulate in the stratosphere, and the "...runaway greenhouse", where water vapor becomes a dominant component of the atmosphere that the Earth starts to undergo rapid warming that could send its surface temperature to over 900 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit as the atmosphere will be totally overwhelmed by water vapor, causing its entire surface to melt and killing all life, perhaps in about 3 billion years' time. Either way, the loss of oceans will inevitably turn the Earth into a primarily desert world with the only water left being a few evaporating ponds scattered near the poles, and huge salt flats around what was once the ocean floor, much like the Atacama Desert in Chile or Badwater Basin in Death Valley, where the last life may remain for a few billion more years. 
Because of this, in the former case the loss of oceans will save the last life instead of destroying it completely. However, complex life like plants and animals will be long extinct before this happens, as the loss of oceans will cause plate tectonics to come to halt. Water is a lubricant for tectonic activity, and the loss of all water will make the crust too hard and dry to be subducted, therefore, causing the carbon cycle to cease altogether. There would be fewer volcanoes to return CO2 into the atmosphere. Topic. Physics of the runaway greenhouse Normally, when a planet's radiation balance is perturbed e.g., by increasing the amount of sunlight it gets or changing the greenhouse concentration see radiative forcing, it will transition to a new temperature until a stabilizing feedback known as the Stefan-Boltzmann response restores an equilibrium between the amount of energy the body absorbs and that which it emits. For example, if the Earth received more sunlight it would result in a temporary disequilibrium more energy in than out and result in warming. However, because the Stefan-Boltzmann response mandates that this hotter planet emits more energy, eventually a new radiation balance can be reached and the temperature will be maintained at its new, higher value. However, when the planet has an operating water vapor feedback, the efficiency of the greenhouse effect increases as the temperature does, and so the outgoing radiation to space increases less rapidly than for a pure Stefan Boltzmann radiator behaving like a blackbody. Eventually, the infrared absorption increases so much that the amount of energy escaping to space no longer depends on the temperature at the surface, and asymptotes to a fixed value, the Komabayashi Ingersoll limit. If the amount of energy that the planet receives from the star or from internal heat sources exceeds this value, radiative equilibrium can never be achieved. The result is a runaway that continues until the water vapor feedback ceases, which may be when the entire ocean is evaporated and dispersed to space. Topic: <laughs> Connection to habitability. The concept of a habitable zone has been used by planetary scientists and astrobiologists to define an orbital region around a star in which a planet or moon can sustain liquid water. Under this definition, the inner edge of the habitable zone i.e., the closest point to a star that a planet can be until it can no longer sustain liquid water is determined by the point in which the runaway greenhouse process occurs. For sun-like stars, this inner edge is estimated to reside at roughly 84% the distance from the Earth to the Sun although feedback such as cloud-induced albedo increase could modify this estimate somewhat. See also Atmosphere of Venus, an example of a runaway greenhouse effect Runaway climate change Greenhouse and icehouse Earth Heat wave List of heat waves <laughs>